Cyber tension flares between the U.S. and China as President Obama gets set to confront Chinese leader Xi Jinping over hacker attacks on American military networks. Meanwhile, reports say Washington has launched massive preparations for an all-out cyber war. Well, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security is recruiting hackers, uh, opening up to 40,000 job vacancies for cyber warriors. The Obama administration pledged to boost spending on cybersecurity and raise its funding to $3 billion in 2013. Forty U.S. teams of cyber agents are to be formed and 13 of them assigned to launch hacker attacks. RT's Ganesh Chikan investigates. The cyber race between the U.S. and China is starting to look like a real arms race. It has its drills, its spies, and both sides accusing each other of cyber attacks. This June, China will be holding drills with special IT units within its army for the first time. The chief of the U.S. Cyber Command, General Keith Alexander, says the U.S. is now busy setting up 40 new teams of cyber agents that will both protect America's critical infrastructure from hackers as well as launch attacks against the country's adversaries. And so that there is no confusion as to their capabilities, General Keith Alexander says, quote, I would like to be clear that this team is an offensive team. The offensive nature of U.S. cyber defense program is emerging in new reports which say a large chunk of the country's current cyber endeavors does not rely on defensive strategy as one might imagine, but instead involves offensive operations launched with the intent of causing harm on the computers of adversaries. A recent Reuters article cites defense contractors and government officials, most of whom speaking on condition of anonymity, and the article says that the U.S. government has become the biggest buyer in a burgeoning gray market where hackers and security firms sell tools for breaking into computers. The U.S. has demonstrated its ability to carry out a cyber attack against a foreign country when they attacked Iranian nuclear facilities. A similar attack against the U.S. would be seen as an act of war by the Pentagon's own definition. There is a certain game of words going on here. When it's against the U.S., it's called a cyber attack. When it's the U.S. doing it, it's called installing software. But there would be no cyber race without spies. And the latest development here is that the Chinese have reportedly hacked into the Pentagon's most sophisticated weapon systems. A leaked confidential report by the Defense Science Board intended for Pentagon leaders says two dozen system designs were compromised. Those systems are said to be critical to U.S. missile defense and aircraft. U.S. officials point to China. U.S. news outlets run articles with headlines like this one. China is winning the cyber war because they hacked U.S. plans for real war. China traditionally denies the accusations of cyber espionage. But if the accusation is true, if one still has to ask the U.S., what do you expect when they see your cyber forces attacking another country's infrastructure or when they hear you say you're pivoting to Asia Pacific with all that military gear to counter China? In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekhan. Now, in another sign, cyber warfare has stabbed from the pages of uh, science fiction. A NATO recently released a manual on the international law applicable to digital warfare. Daniel Wagner, the head of the country Risk Solutions, says the dangers of a cyber attack shouldn't be underestimated. Cyber war warfare is very much here to stay. It's very much a part of our daily lives. And the trick is going to be to try to make it less of an everyday occurrence and more manageable, that's only going to come with time. But right now, I think uh, the U.S. and every other country in the world is quite vulnerable to cyber attacks. Well, we've already seen that everything from uh, uh, nuclear installations in Iran to uh, the idea of uh, electric grids in the United States or uh, extremely sensitive defense and intelligence secrets have all been vulnerable to cyber attacks. Whether it comes from a government, whether it comes from a very skilled individual hacker, uh, there was the case uh, just last year of Stratfor in the United States, which was a private company, which was hacked by a teenager who uh, managed to get through all the firewalls and basically uh, make his point clear. Uh, he was subsequently discovered, of course. But if this can be done by an individual, imagine what could be done on the part of governments. There are so many things that happen every day that we hear nothing about. 